Today I am going to be building a sliding barn door. Not quite sure what I'm going to do yet. Haven't really given it much thought. I'm just going to go out to the garage and uh, kind of wing it and see what happens. Yeah. I picked up this really cool rough sawn pine from Home Depot. It's super cheap, super rough, and it's gonna give this door a lot of character. So I'm gonna lock and load my Craig jig and set it to three quarter inch material, and I'm going to be using an inch and a quarter pocket screws for the entire build. Putting three pocket holes on each side, and I'm ready to join. <laughs> I don't even exercise. Because my boards aren't flat, there was a bit of a gap. Well, it's big and terrible. And by a bit, I mean almost an eighth of an inch, so I'm going to have to do a lot of sanding. When I was joining the bottom half of the door, the frame wanted to pull in, so I used the clamps to keep it from pushing in too far. Well, looks like I'm going to do a lot of sanding. Wipe any excess glue with a wet shop rag. I'm using my tape measure to center up the center board, make a mark, and I'm just a hair too long, so I'm going to trim this down. Now that the board is centered, I'm going to attach it with glue and pocket screws. The two center diagonal pieces are at sort of a weird angle. It's 55.7 degrees, and my miter saw will not cut to that. So I made the first cut by hand, just by lining it up with the door frame, and then I'm going to transfer it over to another piece of wood and make that cut on my miter saw. I'll also be using an inch and a quarter pocket screws to join these boards as well. By this time I wisened up and I used a piece of scrap wood underneath to keep the front flush so that there wouldn't be that big gap. Now that the main frame is finished, I'm going to rip the front and the back piece of my tongue and groove boards on my table saw. Liberally apply glue to the first board, turn it over and face nail it all along the board. We're going to use this as an anchor to attach the rest of the tongue groove boards. And now that the first board is in place, I'm just going to treat the rest like I would a hardwood floor installation. I got a scrap piece of 1x4 and a rubber mallet, and I make my way along the board and I face nail it as I get it in flush. I'll be using an inch and a quarter brad nails to secure the rest of the boards. I'm going to fill in all of these little brad holes with wood filler, and that way when you see the other side of the door, it will look nice and clean. Trim the excess of the tongue groove board with your circular saw, and I'm using a 1x4 as a track guide because I'm not capable of making straight cuts by myself. After sanding the entire door, I'm going to be using Minwax's special walnut stain. 
It has a really rich tone and it matches my hardwood floors, but feel free to use any stain that your heart desires. I just want you to be happy. This coat should be fine. I was actually hoping you'd leave it this coat because it looks distressed. Yeah, I wouldn't go darker. It looks good. I, what I'm saying is I wouldn't put a second coat. It's badass. It's pretty cool. You're welcome. <laughs> it's my design. Get out of here. I told you Get. to put it in the dining room. Get. Today I'll be using a 79 inch sliding barn door kit from Industrial by Design. It's going to add a touch of sophistication to my otherwise rough around the edges barn door. First up I'm going to install the casters onto my barn door. The bottom of the caster is going to be about an inch and three quarters off of the top of the door. After everything is lined up, grab a clamp and a speed square and get everything secured to the barn door. Then grab your drill bit and drill all the way through the two holes. Now this nut is supposed to be on the front, but I opted to put mine on the back just because I liked the way it looked. But regardless of how you put these on, the installation is going to be the same. Hand tighten the bolts either from the front or the back and then finish up using your wrench and ratchet kit to get everything tight. Once you have the first caster secured, repeat this same process on the other side. I picked up the barn door handle from Home Depot for about 25 bucks, and I spray painted it black to match the hardware from Industrial by Design. I pre-drilled with a smaller drill bit and then attached it with the screws provided. Next, I installed the two rubber bumpers that are going to go on top of the door. These will keep the door from getting bumped off the track the rail in the hardware kit has holes that are pre-drilled 16 inches on center, which is perfect for most houses. Most of the wall studs are 16 inches on center, and mine are, except over top of the doorway I'll be installing this on. So because of that, I'm installing a header. I marked out where the studs fall on my header, and I'm pre-drilling, and then I'm going to bolt the rail to the header. And here is my doorway. Grab my header, and my wife is actually going to help me. Earlier, I marked out where I wanted my header to be, so I'm going to line up my header and then pre drill into the studs and then attach it with bolts. Ideally, you'd have a helper. I think this job is best suited for two people just to make things easier, but if you don't have any friends or loved ones or family, well, I guess you've made it this far, so. After attaching the first bolt, I check for level, and then I'm going to pre-drill and attach the far bolt. My process is to pre-drill in high gear, switch to my socket, shift into low gear, and then bolt it into the wall. You'll find five spacers, bolts, and washers in the hardware kit provided by Industrial by Design. Pre-drill, put the spacer behind the rail, and bolt it in. I'm going to use the same exact process that I used on the header on the rail. I'm going to grab my level, make sure the rail is level, and then I'm going to pre-drill, put the spacer behind the rail, and bolt it in. And from there, the rest of the bolts are really easy to install. It's a strong kit, but not as strong as me. Now is the moment of truth, and I'm just gonna slide the casters onto the rail. Oh man, 
The nylon wheels on this are super quiet and smooth. It's really actually fun to slide this door. Who knew? The second to last step is to install the door stops. These slide right onto the rail and they have two bumpers that will keep the casters from sliding off the rails and hurting somebody. Slide it onto the door rail, get it in position, and then use the Allen key provided to tighten it up. Repeat that on the other side, and that is it. Last but not least, I need to install the floor guide. Ideally, you would install this on the center of the bottom of your door, but that would mean you need to route out a channel in your door so that this can sit in there nicely. The idea is that it won't hit the wall and it won't be able to go out far enough to fall off the track. But because I don't have the right tool, I opted to mount it on the outside of the door. 